Hello, 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 and welcome back to Bitcoin Beats. So, um, as I said yesterday, we've come off the, uh, the 6700 area, as you can see here with this pitchfork. Hit it pretty much on the head, nail on the head here. Um, 6750 and back up, and as I said, we'd probably test 7400 if we did bounce on this pitchfork, right? So, um, in this case, we can see that we've got up to 7377 which isn't quite 74, but um, it's good enough for me. <laughs> uh, I did take a long hit, and I closed it around, I want to say 71.50, because I wasn't sure if we were going to get all the way back up there. Uh, we did in this case, but from there, yeah, you, you want to just be looking for kind of like shorts off of this area for now. Um, there are a few things I want to show you as well, because the 7K area could potentially hold. It is, it is an option here. Uh, it's a mental barrier, but there are, there are a few moving averages around there as well. There's, uh, there's the monthly, which is, uh, dead on 7K, uh, the monthly 21. So, like, we have tested that before, so I would expect that to, maybe, maybe a couple more bounces off that, but, um, it's looking more bearish. As I said yesterday, it's looking a lot more bearish now, so... It shouldn't hold for too long. We might get a nice little range here from around kind of like the, the pitchfork that I was talking about here, right? And um, and essentially the 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 high seven thousands, right? So yeah, in terms of the bigger structure here, we've we've basically broken out of our descending triangle here. We got out of our trap zone. If you if you have been watching my my weekly. Uh, sorry, my daily videos, then you will know that if we stayed in this trap zone, then there, there was a lot more potential to go up, right? What's happened here is we've broken below it, we've closed candles below it, and then after that, we've opened and closed candles below it. So that is essentially, for me, a very, very bad sign. I don't expect us to recover from this very soon at all. I believe that is it. I believe we've retested it here. You can see here with this yellow line, we have retested our... Um, our line here, right? And we've basically been rejected off of it. So for now, I'm looking for shorts. I will be probably taking a long off of 67 if we get down there again, just for another small bounce for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, again, 7,000. If 7,000 looks like it's going to hold and it's looking like we are getting some pretty decent rejections on the lower time frames off of that, then a long makes sense. A long makes sense. I wouldn't say to long just yet because obviously we have. Got come out of our trap zone, um, we've come up and tested it and we've been rejected, so there could potentially be more downside here. If you did go back to the, the 3k drop, I don't know if it's going to load, but if we go down, sorry, the 6k drop, um, you can see that the same pitchfork, we bounced off it over a similar range, right? We bounced up, I don't know, maybe a few more percent here, but we bounced up, eventually we did break through it. So... Do I expect this to hold again? Yes, I do expect this pitchfork to hold again. You can see here on the way up as well, it's it's held throughout. Um, but I, I am a lot more bearish now because we're out of this trap zone, right? I do put weight on this trap zone. Um, we did go out of it before here, but it was it was more wiki, right? In, in this case, we've got candle bodies opening and closing below it, right? So what you can do here is basically just establish your range, which would essentially just be something like this, and then continuation to the downside, right? So for a longer term play, a short here is fine. Um, but if you are if you're scalping, if you are looking out for those traps, thinking like a whale, and we do like to think like a whale on this channel, um, it's it's important to play these ranges because we could be here for a while. We could be here for maybe even a month, right? So after such a, uh, a well, <laughs> an extended downside period for the bears, I would say that we, we are due for some relief. A lot of people are calling out the, the high 7,000s, the kind of low 8,000s as a bounce. Personally, I believe that's a little bit too high. I will, I will jump on board that train if we do get back inside this trap zone but we have closed i mean we've closed a, a daily uh, below this level now so i do expect this range to be where we're going to be at for some time here whether it's volatile wiki in both directions this this is the 12 hour remember um that's obviously an option we could we could come up here for a few hours and then come back down that's fine but if we're closing 12 hours in this range then that's that's the range for me and that's what i'm going to be trading right so that range will be between 6700 and basically 7,400, right? Obviously, the, the the lower side is a pitchfork sloping upward, so that's going to be a support that's kind of ascending. So we, we've got to look out for that, any wicks over it, anything like that. 
be on the mark just in case it does break, right? It makes sense for me to, 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 to get something like this for the next leg down, and obviously that would... That would essentially, if I can measure move this out, if this, I mean, we're not we're not being so predictive usually on this channel. We're we're a lot more reactive. But if you were to measure move this down, you could probably measure move it down to probably sixty three hundred. Uh, I wouldn't expect to get that low. I'd probably I'd probably expect a wick to sixty three and then uh, surface around sixty five and then slowly descend from there, right? And then once we do break this kind of area. Um, I want to say the 6,000 era, that's when we could see this bigger measure move coming down, which is down here, if you remember me drawing down here yesterday. Um, this is essentially where, where, well, where you'd expect to come after, if, if you look at the, the previous bear market and kind of like what's going on here. So if we are to get down to the low 3,000s, that's kind of the route I would see happening there. Um, not to say that this isn't recoverable. This like there's always a chance. There's always a chance. Obviously, last time we were down here in the trap zone, we got a three thousand dollar pump and tested the high side within like four hours, right? So, um, just bear that in mind. This is a whale's game. The the people with the biggest guns here will win. It's the manipulators, the people with the market. They have to abide by some rules, some resistances and supports, and that's where we make the money. But essentially, if they want to push it up, they will push it up. Um. <coughs> With that being said, apologies if I'm a bit slurry today. I haven't had a coffee, so it's, it's a little bit... My brain's catching up um, with the day. <laughs> um, a bullish scenario here, I would say, is to probably pull out some moving averages here and say, for example, here, right? Um, we've got the weekly. If we can close the weekly above this, I would expect to bounce. Um, just naturally, I would expect to bounce uh, probably back up to 7,800, right? For the next week. Um, in terms of... Bouncing before then, bouncing this weekend, we're going to need pretty big moves uh, to, to get through all of the supports we've previously had, becoming resistances. Um, I don't expect to get over 79, kind of the 8,000 area if we do bounce, though. Uh, I do believe this is it for Bitcoin. I do believe it's full bear mode. And I mean, yeah, good luck if you're a bull. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, again, usually with the weekly here, you can see if we are if we are above the the twenty one EMA and the the ten moving average, the ten simple, then we are in a bullish phase, right? This is not new news. This is this is something that I I basically talk about when whenever we're above them. <laughs> but in this case, we are we are below them on the weekly, right? We we open and and we're about to close below them on the weekly. Um, if we close like this, right? If we were to close above them, we're going to need a, a pretty humongous pump above 9,000, right? Probably not going to happen, guys. I'm going to be honest here. It's not It's not out of the equation, but it could happen. I mean, it's not going to happen, let's be honest. So, yeah, if you are a bull and you you want that that kind of bull market to continue, then you're going to want to get above that area, uh, the 88 area. It's not going to happen, though. It's not going to happen. I, I can confidently say that it's not going to happen. Um as far as 8,000 goes, we might get a nice nice trade up to there, but it's it all depends if we can get through these these zones that have uh, that we've got below, right? You can see, as I pointed out earlier with with our trap zones, we're gonna, we've got a lot to get through here. We've got a hell of a lot to get through. In terms of how I will be playing this, um, well, in the short term, as I said, between 67, 6,800, and 7,400 is 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 where it is for me. Um, I will be looking for basically reactions off moving averages. E every time we're either side of the range, I'm going to be taking a position, and then I'm just going to be uh, setting a, a close stop loss to the other side. And then if we do break through, um, small loss. And if we get rejected, which I expect to happen, then big win, right? Because this is like a $500 range. This is not something you mess about with, especially when we're down here, right? People think that... Um, if, if Bitcoin's price is high, you can make more money as a trader. That's actually false. Uh, we, we're actually lower here, right? And this range that we're in now is around 10%, which is huge. It's huge for an asset to, to have a 10% range here. So um, I will be looking for those kind of like low risk, high reward scenarios where we're going to be bouncing off of kind of 7,400 down to 7K, probably take profit at 7K and then uh, leave a little bit of my position on down to 67, right? And then rinse and repeat for the other side. Long 67, take profit 7k, uh, close out position at 74. And then if we do break this kind of, this area, this range, then I will be adapting to that and I'll be probably just flipping and taking it in one direction, right? So if we break below 6700, then obviously we're going to go a bit lower. I can flip short there, uh, assuming there's some confirmational candles, right? 
And again, the other side, 7,400. Maybe even a trade up to 76, maybe 78. I'd probably close out the whole position around 8,000, between 78 and 8,000 if I was long there. Um, <coughs> with that being said, again, super bearish. I do expect this pitchfork to hold for a little bit. It has done in the past, as you can see. It's, it's, it's like... Bitcoin is attracted to this pitchfork, it seems, if we're in a bearish phase. And as I was saying earlier, if we're below a lot of these moving averages, we are in a bear market. And for now, we are in a bear market. That's just, that's my opinion. We could get as low as, well, probably the next resistance here, if we do break down, is 5,000. Um, that's where the 200 simples coming in. That's where the 200 EMA is coming in on the weekly. And I put a hell of weight on that. We haven't even touched that yet. So when we do hit that, that's essentially, I expect a huge reaction off of that. Maybe a 25% reaction, maybe like a big, big trade coming off of these. So just bear that in mind as we do come down. But another thing to, to, to kind of warn you guys about, obviously never financial advice on this channel. Um, and before I carry on, I would like to ask you guys to like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any opinions on what I'm saying. Um, but <coughs> as I was saying, as I was saying, uh, as, as this price gets lower, if you are trading on a leverage, if you are trading on a leverage, be very, very careful because, as I said, the percentage swings are a lot higher, which means your your chances of being liquidated are a lot higher. The way you counter this is just moving your leverage down and moving your liquidation away. Um, you can still make similar profits as to where you were at the top simply because the percentage moves are bigger, so you're making more profit. Uh, you just got to keep your liquidation out of the way, as I just said, right? So... Uh, back back on with the kind of analysis, we, uh, if we do break down here on the weekly, very, very, very bad. I do expect this to hold on the first pass here, this, uh, this 89 exponential on the weekly. I do expect that to hold and we'll probably have a small bounce from there, but that's in a couple of days. I am looking for some scalps here uh, in the meantime. If we do just smash through this, it's going to be a very interesting one, simply because when we smash through a moving average like this, um, if we do come down, we do break down all the way down to 5,000, you can expect a massive reaction. Generally what happens if you smash straight through a moving average, you will come back and you will retest it at some point. And this gap, if we do smash through it, it this gap is huge. Um, so you could be talking about a scenario where it's like, if we do smash through this, come down to 5,000, um, bounce here, but then bounce all the way back up to 8,000. That's entirely a possibility. The way moving averages work, if you smash through one, um, you, it basically, it's, it, think of it like, uh, throwing, throwing a tennis ball underwater, right? You throw it and the reaction towards the downside when you've smashed through that layer of water will push it back up and straight through, right? So that could be a potential turning point if we do smash through this. So if that's, I mean, it's bearish as hell, but if we do, if we do do it, then it's, it's going to be a, a potential bullish scenario because the reaction will be so strong. Um, with that being said, with that being said, let's go down to some lower time frames. Obviously, 15 minute. Uh, uh, usually, I would play after a big move here, but simply because we've been going down for so long, and this is obviously being manipulated as hell, just being pushed down. Um, it's it's very difficult to take trades off these moving averages. Uh, again, I do expect a reaction here off this 200 on the 15, but that's the 7400. Uh, we've still got a bit of time. I do expect to hit this today as well. So I will be taking a short from 7,400 at some point today. If we do smash through, no problem. Flip long, no sweat. Um, but that's the risk reward scenario here. Um, small losses, big wins. Let's do it. Um, I did want to bring your attention as well to the three hour where we are in the middle of the range um, right now. A smart decision here would be just to take a long and a short on two separate accounts. Um, take profit at 7,300 and take profit at 7,000. That's done. Like that's that's pretty good. And this does look like a consolidation in this area for now. As you can see here before, um, we weren't really in the center of the range. We were just kind of being pushed down, just kind of being held underwater. I don't know why I'm using all these water metaphors, but <laughs> it, like the whales just ho holding us under here and until we get lower and lower. And this is the first scenario here where we're we're kind of in the middle of the range. Uh, we've tested the upside. We've tested the the bottom side, and now it's it's time to consolidate and find this range and get those trades and get the crypto right. Um, not to take anything away from Kirby there. <laughs> um, in terms of longer term, because I've, I've done my short term and I've done like the super long term. Let's, let's talk about mid term here. Um, if we close a three hour, if we close a three hour above 7,600, I will be taking a long up to 8K, obviously. Um, there's a few indicators uh, behind the scenes that that will basically make this, make this a reality and I put weight on that. 
So a couple hundred buck trade there if we do get up there. Again, uh, a bit longer term, if we get over 8,000 here, if we close a 12-hour candle above 8,000, I'm not going to be super bullish, but I will be I will be taking a trade probably up to 8,400. That, that's if we close a 12-hour above 8,000. I don't expect that to happen. That's uh, That's just, I mean... It's just what my indicators say. If we do that, it's going to be a huge long signal. Let's get it in. But, um, yeah, that's, that's essentially the analysis so far. So if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to like it. Leave a comment if you have any opinions. And uh, feel free to share with your friends. But, yeah, that's, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Tomorrow. Goodbye.